From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! When Wisconsin workers offered a compromise on wages and benefits, but the governor refuses to negotiate, he needs to know this will not stand! Over 100,000 people take to the streets of Madison, Wisconsin, in the largest protest the city has seen since the Vietnam War, this time in opposition to Governor Walker's attempt to strip public employees of the right to collectively bargain. We'll play highlights of the rally and speak with Democratic State Representative Kelda Helen Roy. Then the uprising in Libya continues to spread across the country. We want democracy, we want social justice, we want uh, human rights conventions, international conventions, Separate, uh, separation of powers, we want uh, free elections, we want pluralism, we don't want an Islamic state, but we are proud Muslims, we are proud of our traditions and cultures. We'll hear from pro-democracy protesters in Benghazi. And from Democracy Now! correspondent Anjali Khamet. She just crossed back into Egypt from Libya. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Fears of a humanitarian crisis in Libya are growing amidst escalating violence between rebels and forces loyal to the regime of Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. Anti-government groups have seized control of more areas as they close in on the capital of Tripoli. On Sunday, protesters chained the town of Zawiya, just 30 miles from the capital. As residents celebrated, one demonstrator called for Gaddafi's prosecution for ordering attacks on protesters. It's time for him to be adjusted. Come with we me need the justice because we have people has been killed. Yes. Several people. Can you imagine somebody open his chest yes. to, the, yes. to, to, yes. to to pick yes. up bullets yes. and and the car the car he, he shoot the guy yes. and that's my nephew be, and he's sleeping there. Estimates of the death toll so far have reached as high as 2,000. The United Nations, meanwhile, says over 100,000 people have fled Libya to neighboring Egypt and Tunisia in what it calls a humanitarian emergency. Egyptian nationals are said to account for over half the total. A Red Cross spokesperson said Libya's refugee problem is approaching a crisis. We're very worried, uh, alarmed about the humanitarian situation. Um, you know, as people cross over the border. Uh, we are now mobilizing resources uh, as we speak internationally uh, and through our regional office here in Tunis, uh, sending personnel. The Gaddafi regime has desperately tried to control the information coming out of Libya. Foreign journalists have been brought into Tripoli, but only under government escort. On Friday, one of Gaddafi's sons, Saif al Islam Gaddafi, denied the widespread violence. Now uh, everything is calm, and uh, Tripoli is safe. Uh, today, in the whole of Libya, no casualties, uh, no attacks. Uh, everything is peaceful. So today, everybody is, ha is happy. So uh, peace is uh, is uh, coming back. To our country. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's in Geneva today for a special session of the UN Human Rights Council on the Libya crisis. The meeting comes after the UN Security Council unanimously approved a measure imposing sanctions on the Gaddafi regime. This is U.S. Envoy Susan Rice. We are pleased to have supported uh, this entire resolution and all of its measures, including the referral to the ICC. Uh, we were happy to have the opportunity to co-sponsor this, and uh, we think that it is a very powerful message to the leadership of Libya that this heinous killing must stop and that individuals will be held personally accountable. Over 100,000 people rallied in Madison, Wisconsin, Saturday against Republican Governor Scott Walker's effort to remove the collective bargaining rights of most public workers. It was the largest demonstration Madison has seen since the Vietnam War. Tens of thousands of people marched in solidarity protests nationwide. In New York, thousands gathered for a Save the American Dream rally outside City Hall. Crowds drawing several thousand were also reported in cities 
cities including Chicago, Columbus, Los Angeles and Denver. Back in Wisconsin, hundreds of demonstrators defied police orders and slept inside the state capitol building Sunday night in defiance of Governor Walker's order to leave the capitol. Police decided not to enforce Walker's edict after hundreds of labor activist students and supporters insisted on staying put. We'll have more from Wisconsin after headlines. President Obama's hosting a meeting of the nation's governors at the White House today amidst a contentious debate over the squeezing of workers' rights and social services in the name of reducing deficits. At a gathering of the National Governors Association over the weekend, Democratic and Republican leaders agreed to form a committee to explore ways to amend Medicaid. The panel will look at how states can change eligibility rules and other provisions of the insurance program for low-income Americans. Republicans have called for converting Medicaid from an entitlement program to a block grant similar to how Republicans and President Bill Clinton altered welfare programs in the 90s. Among the strongest advocates for that route is Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, who's just been named the new chair of the National Governors Association's Health and Human Services Panel. Public school teachers in Providence, Rhode Island, have been warned they could lose their jobs this year. The Providence School Board issued the work alert last week, citing a multi-billion-dollar budget shortfall. Nearly 2,000 teachers have been told they could lose their jobs, have been sent pink slips. Afghanistan is facing what's being described as its deadliest period for civilians since the U.S. invaded over nine years ago. According to Afghan officials, more than 200 Afghans have been killed in attacks and military operations over the past two weeks. An Afghan government panel is still investigating claims some 65 people were killed in a U.S.-led attack last week. On Saturday, a government advisor and investigator said 40 of the dead were children. Egypt's top prosecutor has issued a travel ban on former President Hosni Mubarak and his family. Mubarak is believed to remain in Egypt following his ouster earlier this month. But rumors have swirled he'll attempt to flee abroad to avoid prosecution for corruption and human rights abuses under his three-decade rule. Large crowds, meanwhile, have returned to Cairo's Tahrir Square for a series of protests. On Friday and Saturday, tens of thousands rallied in Tahrir to mark the one-month anniversary of their uprising and urge the firing of Mubarak appointees in the Egyptian government. The Egyptian military cracked down on the demonstration, in some instances beating and tasering protesters. Republican Senator John McCain and Independent Senator Joe Lieberman were in Egypt this weekend as the first visiting congressional delegation since Mubarak's ouster. McCain and Lieberman met with officials in Egypt's transitional government and even took a walk through Cairo's Tahrir Square, the focal point of the uprising. At a news conference, McCain had warm words for the Egyptian revolution. This revolution is a repudiation of al-Qaeda. This revolution has shown the people of the world, not just in the Arab world, that peaceful change can come about and, is, and violence and extremism is not required in order to achieve democracy and freedom. That's why we are especially proud to be here where history is being made for the entire world, not just the Arab world. Senator McCain's comments appear to differ from his stance during the height of the Egyptian uprising. Speaking on Fox News just days before Mubarak was forced to resign, McCain described the popular movements in the Arab world as a virus. Uh, this virus is spreading throughout the Middle East. Um, the president of Yemen, as you know, just made the announcement that he wasn't running again. This, I would argue, is probably the most dangerous period of history in of our entire involvement in the Middle East, at least in modern times. Protests, meanwhile, are ongoing across the Middle East. In Bahrain, thousands continue to flood the streets of the capital, Manama. On Sunday, demonstrators marched to a central court building in their deepest foray into the city so far.
The protests come as leading Bahraini Shiite opposition leader Hassan Mushanaf has returned from exile. He was allowed to return after the protests forced the Bahraini monarchy to issue royal pardons. Promising is not enough. We have to see something on the ground. Just by talking, because different times they had promised before, but they did not do anything for the nation of, 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 the, of Bahrain. Thousands of Tunisians have taken to the streets in celebration following the resignation of the interim prime minister, Mohamed Ghannouchi. A holdover from the regime of former President Zine al Abidine Ben Ali, Ghannouchi has faced constant protests since taking the helm following Ben Ali's departure. At least three people were killed and over 100 wounded in clashes on Saturday. The Yemeni president, Ali Abdullah Saleh, is expected to declare a new unity government today amidst ongoing protests. Tens of thousands of Yemenis have gathered in various cities to demonstrate against Saleh's 32-year rule. Opposition leaders are expected to reject Saleh's offer, which critics see as a last-ditch effort to remain in power. The wave of protest has now spread to Oman. On Sunday, up to six people were reportedly killed when government forces fired on protesters demanding political reform. Protesters set government buildings ablaze and launched a sit-in in the city of Sohar. Sultan Qaboos bin Said has ruled Oman since 1970. And the 83rd Annual Academy Awards were held last night in Los Angeles. The film Inside Job, about the nation's financial crisis, was awarded Best Documentary. In his acceptance speech, director Charles Ferguson drew applause after calling for the jailing of financial executives. Forgive me. Uh, I must start by pointing out that three years after a horrific financial crisis caused by massive fraud, not a single financial executive has gone to jail, and that's wrong. Colin Firth and Natalie Portman won the Best Actor Awards. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.